So um, I'm gonna, we're going to get going now, and I think probably we'll leave the door open. Um, hopefully, it's not going to bother anybody uh, because we don't have quite as much time as I thought. Um, for those of you who don't know me, and there are a lot of people in this room I know that uh, I've talked to before, my name's Rick Davis, and we run a nonprofit called Answer Cancer, Answer Cancer Foundation, which uh, came out of a, um, a group started in St. Paul, Minnesota by a gentleman who I saw walk in before, but I don't see him now. John Jet Tysburg, where are you? Well, he was in here, he must have walked in and, and, and walked out again. Um, and Jet had a small group of people that uh, talked to each other on the telephone. It was very much a man's group type of thing. And in fact, uh, when I first joined it, they used to have, they had a, a, a drink, beer can, glass of wine, whatever it was you fancy, they'd have it on the table and they'd have a secret word. And if you said the secret word, you had to take a, you had to take a, a, a swig from whatever the drink was that you were, um, you had on the table. So that was sort of the tone of the group. And I was a little more technical and slowly over a period of time, the group changed and we got bigger and bigger. And of course, in doing all of this, um, I started using the internet more, doing a lot more research. I personally was diagnosed with prostate cancer in, at the age of 56 in 2007, and um, I had a stage three diagnosis, so I finished up having to do a lot of hormone therapy. I was on hormone therapy for 28 months, and the result has, knock on wood, it's, it's been good so far, but I got very interested in supporting men particularly who had more complex, more advanced disease. Um, our website is uh, ancan.org, as you, as you can see. And if any of you want to follow along on your laptops, rather than looking at the screen, you can go to the URL at the bottom, and you'll find the slides that I'm going to show presented there, and you, you'll be able to look at those slides later. Um, they won't have live links, I'm afraid, uh, but um, you'll have to paste and copy the links in if you want to see what's going on live. So let's get, let's get talking about the internet. Um, is there anybody in this room who has not used the internet? Is there anybody in this room who's intimidated by the internet and feels that they're nervous about using it or they feel that they're not getting the most out of it? Okay, good, good, good number of you. So the internet gives you a huge world of information. There's research, there's, there's blogs, you can interact. Um, there are things in the internet, so many things on the internet that when I put this all together, there were some important things that I missed out. And I brought this board in because I know that I've forgotten sites. There may be people in here who have sites, and I apologize to you in advance if I didn't include you on here. But there's only so much you can get into half an hour or 45 minutes of talking. And you'll see at the end, we'll go through a couple of things that that I left out, and if I had more time, I would have made some, sl some additional slides for. The thing about the internet is that you have to be smart when you use it. We had a support group leaders, support group leaders meeting this morning, and um, in that meeting, we were talking about the use of the internet, and somebody said, you know, you've got to be selective. Just because it's on the internet doesn't mean it's true. How many times have people said to you, oh, well, I read it on the internet, right? So, so the question is, how credible is that um, information that you found on the internet? It, does the source have a conflict of interest? Is the source bias? Could well be bias. I want to talk about an example. How many of you have seen this site before? 
one gentleman, two, three, four. Okay, not many, not many of you know this site, which is good. So gents who have seen it, stay quiet. No, 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 no surprises. So this is a great site. It's a site where you can tailor the information to yourself. It's got everything for you from, from having early disease um, to having very late disease. You can retain um, some of the screens on here to come back. It's a good site for you to play around with. One of the reasons I love this site, and let me see if we can, um, let me see if we can just bring something up on here. Uh, I think it's on navigating your, your road. Whoops, excuse me, let's try this again. No, it's not gonna, it's not, it's, uh, oh, here we go. I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring up the live site right now. And um, if I go, I think it is to navigating your road. Let's have a look and see what, what, what comes up here. No, maybe it's understanding your road. Yeah. So this is a video. I'm just going to play 30 seconds or so of this video. And there's a reason for this. Hopefully, um, I don't know if you'll... Uh, now you're not get, you're not going to get the um, the audio, but so we'll we'll come out of this right now. But this gentleman here that you see happens to be the treasurer of Answer Cancer Foundation. His name's Rob Boniscus. He's a wonderful guy. He got diagnosed uh, in his early forties. Um, and he's in his early 50s today. Um, he still has metastasized cancer. He's been through a bunch of drugs, abiraterone and zalutamide. He's about to start chemo. And as we speak, he's at 7,000 feet. He just did a hike yesterday of seven miles with his, uh, with his good wife, who you saw on there. Um, so this is a great site. It's a helpful site. But you can see, if you go down to that third line, that this site actually is sponsored by Janssen. How many of you know which drug Janssen makes? Well, you can see it on the screen. Janssen makes Zytiga, Abiraterone. Now, doesn't take away from the site, but my point is you've got a sleuth. You've got to be aware of what you're looking at on the internet. And this is a very, very good example of doing a little bit of background work. You'll find Janssen's name on that site, but you've got to look for it. By and large, this talk is going to fall into certain categories. We're going to talk about certain areas on the, in, on, on the uh, internet and certain sites in certain areas that you'll be able to go access later. The first area that I want to talk to is what I call reference library. So these are sites where you'll find all kinds of information about prostate cancer, not just medical information, but insurance and financial information, and information about where you're going to find support groups, um, advocacy information, uh, people that are speaking on your behalf to the states, to Washington, et cetera, et cetera. It's going to move you around. Information about intimacy, for example, or where to start, how to start living your life after you've, after you've had various uh, uh, protocols. Some of these sites are us too, um, which most of you know. Is there anybody in here who has not heard of us too? Okay. Well, us too is the largest sponsor of support groups in the country. And uh, they sponsor our virtual group, amongst many, many other groups. And let's go to, let's go to the US2 site, since, since their primary purpose are support groups. Let's just have a look here at the top and find, um, let's just see, take action, get connected. Uh, where's their support group? Find a support group, okay? So 
And that's a good little tip, what I just did. A lot of times on most of these sites right now, you just run your cursor along the top, the menus will drop down, and you'll look for what you want to find on the internet. So let's just go to find a support group. So for those of you who don't know, or have never heard of um, a support group, who, one person, anybody out there who's never heard of us two. You've never heard of us two? Where do you live? Connecticut. Well, I happen to know where they, I happen to know where the support group is in Connecticut because it's a really, really good one. Um, let's have a look and see what, what's in Connecticut. Well, that's the one I know. There's one in Danbury. It's a fantastic group. A fantastic group. It's got a great leader. But all of you, if you want to find a local support group, go to the US2 site. But US2 just isn't about support groups. There's information here. Look at this on prostate cancer. Newly diagnosed men, prostate cancer drugs, side effects, relapse. We can find information elsewhere, educational materials, um, information for military vet veterans, lots and lots of stuff. We don't have time to explore it right now, but you can see why I call sites like this a reference library, because there's all kinds of information about, about them all over. We move, we're going to move pretty quickly, so I, I just want to, I'm going to come out of this and we're just going to talk about a couple of the others. PCRI. PCRI, we all know, we've all heard of PCRI, and they have a new site, it's, I shouldn't say it's new, it's a revised site with a lot of good information um, on the site, so you'll go down, you'll, you'll pick it up, you want information on active surveillance, clinical trials we're going to talk about later, um, but you can see imaging, different things. These are all sites where, uh, these are all uh, tabs within the site where you get a lot more information. And by the way, um, like I said, you don't need to take notes. If you're comfortable going back to the internet, you can go to our site, you'll be able to download these slides and you'll see them all later. So don't drive yourself nuts trying to keep up with me. Um, Two or three other sites, Prostate Cancer Foundation, Zero, which is our main advocacy group, Mail Care. Um, these are all sites that are reference library sites. Now, some of you might want to do some more clinical research. Does anybody read the medical articles in here? A few. So the medical articles aren't the easiest to read, but if you want to do that, here are two good sites, PubMed and Google Scholar, both of which you can go to. Let's, let's take a quick look at PubMed. And when we, when we go to PubMed, it's going to ask us to clinical queries. So let's put in here, enter search terms. I'm going to put in prostate cancer, whoops, I'm sorry, I uh, think quicker than I type, prostate cancer, and let's just say immunotherapy, right, because everybody's interested today in what's the next best thing in immunotherapy, so we'll put in immunotherapy, and we'll hit search, and I thought I saw a whole bunch of articles. Oh, I missed the immunotherapy. Thank you. There you go. Prostate cancer immunotherapy. And we've got 1,292 articles. Okay. Now, I'm not going to get into how you can narrow this down, but you can. And if you call me and we talk, I can help you. But what I'm saying to you is, this is an enormous medical library that you have at your fingertips, right here at your desk. PubMed's um, one site, Google Scholar is, a, is another site. Um, again, we're, we're not going to spend too much time. Um, there are sites that are government sponsored, like NCI, National Cancer Institute, NCCN, which is the National um, comprehensive Cancer Network, which constitutes a whole bunch of hospitals. 
like uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering, um, UCSF, Johns Hopkins, MD Anderson. There are 40 odd hospitals in that network and their parent has a great site that you can go to. Uh, we don't have time to look at it now, but I do want to talk to you about some actual hospital sites. So if you live near a good hospital, an NCCN hospital or an NC NCI hospital, the chances are you're going, they're going to have a site. And hopefully this, this one is going to come up. If it doesn't, I've got a, uh, if, if, it, if, if, it, if it takes too long, we can't wait for it in here. Oh, there we go. Okay. At least this is a faster internet connection than in the room. Has anybody tried the internet connection in the room? It's a killer. It's a killer. Okay. So um, I've gone to the Department of Urology, and again, there's a lot of information on this UCSF site. And one of the things that I love that they have is the patient information. Now, every one of these little boxes, behind them, there's a pamphlet. And it's a pamphlet that meets the standards of UCSF, which is an outstanding hospital, and will inform you. There's one pamphlet on here I just want to mention quite quickly. And um, by the way, great pamphlet on nutrition. You want to know about nutrition? This is the pamphlet. Anybody list, did anybody in this room here on presentation on nutrition from the uh, dietitian at UCSF a few weeks ago? Um, so this is a, the pamphlet that you can, you can download, Managing Impotence. But this one here is the one that I really would like to talk about just for a second, because this is something that um, I am proud to say I initiated. Because when I was diagnosed in 2007, the information on, uh, that was available for men when, when placed on hormone therapy was negligible. How many, men, how many men in this room and their caregivers have been given good information when their doctor placed them on hormone therapy? Do anybody know what to expect? Got one gent over there. God bless you, doctor. I sat in a room in an advocate's meeting, and I had Peter Carroll, the head of urology, and Mac Roach, who was my doc, the head of radiation oncology, and they said, we need this. I won't even go into the stories of how difficult it was to produce it, but this is the quality of the books that are on there. This is available to everybody. That's what the internet brings you. So there's also a whole bunch of sites, as we talked before, um, that are produced by the big farmers, the biotechs, the manufacturers. And it just goes without saying, these are their marketing sites. And if they're their marketing sites, let the buyer beware, caveat emptor. Very important. There's a couple I want to talk about. Janssen, we've already covered, was a great site. But there's another site that I like, not just because we're very grateful that they have helped us to get here today and to make this presentation, but because I think that this particular circulating tumor um, video, which is only about two and a half minutes long. We're not going to watch it all, but hopefully we'll, we'll just get to see the beginning of it. But, um, and we'll show it to you. If you come to our booth outside, we'll show it to you. But this is a great, great video. Who's heard of the term liquid biopsy in here? Who knows about liquid biopsies? Who knows what, who's heard the term liquid biopsy, but they don't really know what it is? So those, if you don't know what it is, this is what you've got to watch. Because this is going to explain it to you. And I think it does an outstanding, outstanding job to explain to you what, a liquid, bio, what liquid biopsies are. And having said that, it is a manufacturer site, it is a biotech site. So just because it's a pharma site doesn't make it a bad site. But you need to know that it's a pharma site. Clinical trials are always a big question. How do I find out about clinical trials? You can find out yourself about clinical trials. 
there are a couple of ways to do that. We're going to look in a moment at clinicaltrials.gov, but I just want to say a quick word about Emerging Meds, which is a private company with a, with, with, with a business model um, that's been around now for about 10 years. It just coincidentally, I happen to know the woman that, 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 that found it. Um, and what they do now, recently, this is, a, this is a new business line for them, is they are driving um, clinical trial models for other companies, like, for example, Foundation Medicine or Us2. So some of you may have seen that Us2 says, we'll tell you what trials are available for your disease. Well, they don't have the software, but they have an arrangement with us to, with, uh, with emerging meds. So you're seeing emerging meds information. And it, 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 it's a great deal. And especially if you're not comfortable doing it yourself, looking yourself, it's a great way to go. Now, clinicaltrials.gov is the government-sponsored site. Uh, how many of you have been on clinicaltrials.gov? A handful. And it's an international site. But let's just say we'll, 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 we'll do a, uh, a quick search. Hopefully, I can spell better this time. Prostate cancer and... Um, Who's looking for a clinical trial? Anybody in here? You're, you are. For what? For what? It's a big top. Sorry? Got it. Okay. So we'll put in immunotherapy again. <laughs> well, we'll put in repeat, but I don't, I don't think that's going to make a difference, but but we'll put it in, we'll, we'll put it in, we'll put it in anyway. Hold on, immunotherapy, and we'll put in, repeat, how's that? And um, we'll, we'll say uh, United States, because you sound like you live around here. And I'm not going to put a state in, because I don't, I don't want to limit it right now, but if you, if you wanted to put a re geographic, a re regional area, Okay, well, Hawaii, you're, you're out of luck, except you have the prostate cancer expert from Hawaii ha happening to sit a row in front of you. So you should talk to him afterwards because he may be able to help you. But, um, but all right, we'll, we'll put California in. I'm from Hawaii. So is he. Okay, let's, let's, see, let's have a look and see what immunotherapy studies there are. And I'm going to take out the word repeat, even though my Hawaii expert asked me to put it in. And I'm going to see if we take out the word repeat, if we get anywhere. We get 31 studies in California. Now, I can't help you go through each one of those studies. Some of them are recruiting. Look, you can see this one, this one is not recruiting. This one's terminated. This one here is recruiting. Well, you're going to have to go down and you're going to have to look. But I just want to show you what you can do with clinicaltrials.gov and how you can bring information that you didn't think was available to you right into your own home. And then you can talk to people like myself or Peter Kafka or others, and we can help work with you to sort through which are good trials, which aren't good trials. So just moving on, um, I want to talk a little bit about some of the blogs. We're going to move into an area now which is interactive. Everything you've been looking at before has been one way. But these sites that we're going to talk now are going to be two-way sites, interactive. You and whoever's at the other end of that website. How many of you are familiar with new prostate cancer infolink? Okay, well, I would like to be doing this talk next year, and I'd like to see every hand go up. Because for me, this is one of the most worthwhile sites that is out there. It's run by a guy called Mike Scott, capably assisted right now by Jan Mannerite, who some of you may know used to be, used to be uh, associated here. And Mike... And 
Don't ask me how he does it, but he goes through all the prostate cancer news that he can find, and he puts and he writes articles about what he thinks are most important pretty much on a daily basis. You can be informed on a daily basis, as he, as he posts, daily basis, or even on a weekly basis, or I think a monthly basis. And these are some of the articles that we've seen in this last week. Good advocacy, good advice on the quality of care. Um, Alzheimer's dementia and androgen deprivation. That's, this, is, this, this is an old debate that's been going on for a while. So everybody can sign up here and when they've read the article, if they want to comment, they can comment. And most times, you're going to get a response from the site master. You might not like it because he's a, he's a little ornery. He speaks with a funny accent like I do, which doesn't necessarily make you ornery, but it seems to have had that effect on him. But he is a great guy. I know him well, and he's very smart. Um, Interestingly enough, he doesn't have prostate cancer. Um, but I've known Mike pretty much as long as he's been doing this. Another one is Prostate Cancer News, which is, um, which is uh, Alan Edel's site. Alan Edel writes very, very capably and, and, and astutely on uh, subjects related to radiate, radiology, radiation, screening. And then there are the interactive PCA blogs. And by those, I mean sites like Inspire, Healing Well, the sites um, that uh, I attribute to our Australian friend that's sitting in the corner over here, Jim Marshall, Jim, 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 Jim. And this is where you can make a comment, ask a question, and the whole community of people are going to respond back to you. How many, how many people have been on these sites in here? A lot of you, I think. And when you walk around here, you're going to hear people's names. And people like John Fortin, Henry Oate, who um, you'll see responding all the time. Peter Kafka is another one that, that takes the time to respond. I, I responded to many, many people for years on this. In fact, I was lucky enough to get an award for us, too, for that work. I just don't have the time anymore. So I, 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 I'm rarely on the site, but people still know my name from the site. My name on that site is RD, if any of you have seen it. Um, so what you'll find on these sites, hopefully this is going to bring up, uh, let's see. OK, there's a conversation going on right now on focal laser ablation. How do you make your medical decisions? That's from the uh, that's from the owner from the um, sponsors of the site. That's an Inspire question. Um, alternatives to hormone therapy. So you click on this, you'll read what they said, you'll respond. But again, caveat emptor. You've got to watch out for who's responding to you. You'll get a feel after a little bit. Some people have an axe to grind. There are people on there who are only, only want to push proton therapy. Whatever you say, you've got to do proton therapy. But there are other people who are very fair. Fair in the sense of even. Not that, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with proton therapy, but it, it isn't the be-all and the end-all. You've got to know who's responding to you. And the only way you can know who's responding to you is if you are, go on there regularly and you read regularly what people are, uh, what people are saying. There are, there are several of these sites. I'm just going to mention a few. Uh, Healing Well. Any of you use Healing Well in here? Yep. Um, I know the Australians use your site, Jim, so we won't even ask there. And I appear on there very occasionally. Um, Health Unlocked, Mail Care, and then ACS has one, Cancer Survivors. They're all moderated to different degrees. Us too is probably the Inspire side is the least moderated, um, all the way to some on this list that are very heavily moderated. So you'll, you, you'll get a sense of that group. Um, the next type of interactive virtual site I want to talk about are the webinars. So I like a couple of sites. Cure Talk is one. Um, 
most of the prostate cancer information on, on Cure Talk is hosted by, um, by Mike Scott. I've appeared on a number of panels on there, and some of you might have heard me. Um, and um, we've done a couple recently. I did one on precision medicine. If we waited long enough for this site to, to load, okay, they've got one on multiple myeloma coming up. But I could, um, I'm going to go to, uh, I'm going to go to the still shot of this. So these are, you can put in prostate cancer. These are a couple of um, recent uh, Cure Talk webinars and you don't have to listen to these live you can pull these back up and you can listen to them they're patient-centric they're oriented towards you cancer care is another one great site cancer care um, it is they have a series of prostate cancer lectures right the way through the year with excellent excellent doctors in terms of interaction that clearly brings up the word support and in terms of live support, Cancer Care actually has a live written group, which runs, I think, for about 12 weeks. And they have a moderator on there, but you type something in and somebody types something back to you. In, times, in terms of virtual support groups, you're very limited. Cancer Care does run a couple of phone groups. They don't run anything for prostate cancer. The only people that we know that run for prostate cancer are ourselves on the Cancer and the Cancer Foundation, um, which is peer-led, and Jim Jim's group. Jim and ourselves have been doing it for about the same period of time since around 2010. We originally were the were the Reluctant Brotherhood, and we still are the Reluctant Brotherhood, but um, that's just an element of what we do. So I'm going to use our site just for Henry. You missed a reference. I gave you. I'd, I gave you a plug, but you weren't here. <laughs> it's OK. Henry Oat, gentlemen. So you might have seen H. Oat on Inspire. This is behind H. Oat. Um, so we are the home. We like to say we're the home of virtual support groups. Um, we run 10 groups a month which is quite a lot. Eight of them are specifically for prostate cancer. And um, two are just for caregivers of any type of advanced cancer. We are expanding into other diseases. And I'd like to talk to anybody who's interested in starting a virtual group for something other than prostate cancer. We're free. We drop in. I welcome all of you to, um, to, to join us. Um, we'll just, I'll just show you a, a quick look. Um, it's easy to join our sites. We run our meetings uh, on GoToMeeting. Uh, you can join on the internet, or you can join with the telephone. How many people in here have, have been on one of our Answer Cancer uh, meetings? So you know, there's maybe 10 people in here. They'll talk to you afterwards about, about our meetings. Um, and it's just like being in a support group a physical support group. But some of you live in places where you can't get to a physical support group. And some of you have a physical disability that isn't going to allow you to move around so easily. And then there are some people, and one of our uh, moderators falls into this category, who's agoraphobic. And he doesn't like to step out his house. So what we do is bring that group right into your living room. And you participate and you talk to us for an hour and a half, for two hours, whatever it is. It's moderated. And you pick up all kinds of information. The groups tend to be technical. Um, certainly, the advanced group and the, um, to a lesser extent, the low risk group. But we also have a men's group, as I mentioned before, the old Reluctant Brotherhood, which is just a lot of camaraderie and joking and, 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 and a lot of fun. So we're free, we drop in, stop by our booth, and pick up a card, fill it out, and we'll put you on the distribution list. And uh, that'll tell you before each meeting starts. So um, let me, let's keep going. Um, there are also the 
social media sites. And more and more, there are people that have private groups, and public groups for diseases on these sites. I know there are prostate cancer groups on there. I'm not a social media person. Um, we have Jake Hannum is our social media coordinator. Um, we have a uh, whoops. We have a, uh, a Facebook page. I don't know how quickly this is going to come up, but uh, if you're on Facebook, please follow us. Um, we 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 keep it up to date. There's lots of good information. That's our Facebook page. We tweet from time to time, so you can follow us on there. But again, the internet, great 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 uh, source of. Uh, uh, for prostate cancer information, social media is a great source for prostate cancer information. I also want to mention that um, another way to interact with us over this weekend is going to be in the hall. So some of you um, may have seen a contraption that is at one end of the hall. Okay, and let me see if I can. Let me see if I can show you. We've, we've got this running on a loop. But uh, John, are you, is John Teisberg back in here? No. Um, John uh, created this animation to explain to people what man's bits are. Because who ever heard of seminal vesicles? You know, people thought it was something to do with the church, I, you know? Um, and, 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 you know, urethra. So, John used to, John used to moderate our low risk group, an intermediate risk group. And it was a challenge for him to explain to people what is going on. So, he's an animator. He put this all together. This is nine minutes long. We're not going to watch it right now. And then he had the bright idea that maybe he could make a working model of this full size. And PCRI liked that idea because it had gone to us to convention last year and they said, could you bring it out to California? So no expense spared. Thank you, PCRI. We have it for you. And starting this afternoon and tomorrow, during the intervals, John's going to be physically demonstrating this machine. We will need all of you to be there to help because there are cranks. You can imagine, and God knows what, but this is going to, when you walk away, at least you're going to know what's inside you. Or used to be. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Um, just a few. I'm almost done, and then we'll take, we'll have, we should have about 20 minutes for questions, which is what I'm aiming for here. It may, it may not be appropriate for young children or old ladies either, you know. But we've got plenty of doctors if any of them pass out. And there are a few surprises involved. I am not at liberty to tell you. You will have to watch the uh, presentation. Um, these are just some general helpful resources. I love Caring Bridge. It is a wonderful site. God forbid any of you get really sick and you have a lot of family and friends. This is a way to keep all your family and friends well informed just with one post. It's kind of like a social media news site. It's a great site. Cancer Care has all kinds of great financial information on there to help you. They offer uh, social workers, one-on-one -on -one social worker calls, all kinds of great things. Cancer Support Community, Cancer Common Smart Patients, all of these you'll have time to look at on your own. And the very last thing that I want to just talk to you about is there's a lot of information here, and most of you have a lot of information on your computers. How many of you organize your information on your computers? Sort of. Certainly, that was probably a third. So I want to encourage you all to use your bookmark function, because this bookmark function is just like a big big cabinet. This is mine. And you can see I've got all kinds of stuff. This isn't just about prostate cancer. Look, sports, radio. Anybody wants to follow the arsenal, I can give them all the websites. But let me go to prostate cancer. 
So look at prostate cancer. I've got on there, over here, different categories. So every time I bookmark a site, I put it in that category. So I'll go to doctors. My, only because doctors is the only one that I have well organized. It's alphabetized. So, you know, somebody asked me about a particular doctor. I can go back over here and I can send you a link about that particular person. So, you know, I had some conversation with Alicia Morgans this morning, a written conversation with Alicia Morgans. You want to know about Alicia Morgans? I'll send you a link. Or I, I recommend to you that you go find a, a doctor in a particular place. Dr. Almeida's in here. You want to know what you want to know about Dr. Almeida? So I can just go right up to here and click on there, and I'm going to bring up his site. But I'm organized. Now, I've got so much information. I mean, just, just, just to give you an idea, just look at this. This is, this is all stuff that I have on advanced prostate cancer. Yeah? And I've got, and I can repeat this, but all I'm telling you, and I'm not as well organized there, and I haven't translated a lot of that back to, um, to my screen, to my um, website. So basically, that's, that's all I, I wanted, all I've got time to tell you. Again, you can reach out to me, you can talk to me over the weekend, you can find us on the website, you can join us anytime on any of our groups. And, um, and I thank you for listening, and it's really just an honor to be able to address everybody here. And I'm, we're happy to take questions. We've got, we've got 15 minutes for questions, so um, there's a mic up here. So if people just want to, if, if you have questions, come up to the mic so everybody can hear you. Sorry? OK, so I use, um, I use a browser. Um, I use Google Chrome. It depends on what browser you use. But if you look at the top of your browser, doesn't matter what browser it is, there's going to be an opportunity for you to bookmark or to save a title. You just have to look at your particular browser and find where it is. I, yes, but I'm not that familiar with Apple. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not familiar with the. I'm not. I don't know what you use, but on Safari, I don't know how to use it. I don't know where it is, but yes, there's something on Safari. So, so, but. Okay. So there's a lady over here. She, see, see the, could you stand up for a second? Okay. You see this lady? She'll show you. She'll tell you how to do how to do it on 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 on, on your. Anybody else? It's better if you use the mic just so that everybody can hear you. Any other questions? How about professional associations like the Society for Immunotherapy for Cancer, SIT Cancer, not work? Yeah. Um, so, you know, the, 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 there's, um, of course, the one that immediately comes to mind is ASCO, um, which is the... Um, uh, clinical uh, American Society of Clinical Oncologists, and within uh, the Society of Clinical Oncologists, they have uh, urology sections and this section and that section. But yes, there, there are. Um, there's a great immunotherapy uh, site called um, I forget. Larry Fong did a great talk for them. I'd have to go and look. But there is a there's, there's a great. Uh, 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 immunotherapy society. It isn't really a professional. It's not really a society of immu immu immunologists. But yes, the uh, American uh, AUA, the American Uro Urology Association, Astro, which is the radiation oncology. There's a whole bunch of them. In terms of the information that's available on those sites, um, they tend to tailor it uh, more professionally. But I know that AUA um, over the past few years. Has, has, has oriented it more, uh, made it more patient-centric. I don't use those sites a whole great deal, um, but yes, they're a good source. I know on the SIP cancer site, patients can get their members for free. There you go. Absolutely. And there are, and you know, uh, the, 
here, here are some sites that I forgot to tell you about. See, I put a little red face in the corner over here. Um, there are a whole bunch of great sexual health sites. Um, there are newsletters. I haven't even touched on newsletters, but you can sign up for newsletters. Euro to, uh, or, 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 or daily uh, digests like Euro Today or MedPage or Medscape. Those are th three different ones there. There are so many. I mean, we're not going to cover everybody. There's a question at the back. No, I was just going to mention EuroToday.com. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, could you use the mic, please? Could you use the microphone? I can speak loudly. Once I did a lot of research, Okay. Once you did a lot of research, how do you find how do you find a good a good urologist? Well, that that how do you find a good urologist? You, just, you interview them more. Okay. I'm I am I'm happy to talk to you about that afterwards. I'm, I don't want to take that question now because it's an excellent question, but it really isn't on 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 topic of using using the internet. But it's a great question, and we will talk to you. There are there are three or four moderators from Answer Cancer that are in this room, and any one of us can talk to you about how to find the best urologist, and we will do. But forgive me for not answering it now. Jim Marshall. Uh, <laughs> just in case uh, anyone wanted to say good day, Jim, 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 Jim. Uh, I'm the guy on the scooter. You want to see me sometime during the weekend. Thanks, Rick. Oh, okay. We're a big group, and we cannot all hear. Well, I keep asking people to use the microphone, but I can't force them. I'm sorry. Unless maybe it comes out. Maybe the microphone. Oh, there you go. All right. So, uh, Peter, do you mind? Peter, would you mind just take, taking handing the mic around? This this gentleman is Peter Peter Kafka, who lives on Maui and who moderates for Answer Cancer and does some absolutely amazing support work, particularly for people living on the island of Maui. Did you have a question, sir? No. So now we've got a microphone. Yes, I have a question. Um, yes. I'm 64, I'll be turning 65. Are there any sites for navigating through Medicare? Ah. Oh, what a good question. Um, well, um, I think that if you go First of all, yes, uh, the, I find that the Medicare information itself on the Medicare, on, on Medicare site is actually pretty good, at least to give you a feel for, I'm 66, and so, um, but I went, on to, I went on to Medicare young because, um, because I did so much, uh, I, I, w I got a disability because of all of the hormone therapy that I did, so I, would, I, I qualified early. Um, and when I went on there, I was actually quite impressed with, with, with uh, the information on Medicare itself. You'll also find information, I think, on the Zero site and on the US2 site. And what they're going to do is explain to you what the different levels are, A, B, C, D, in terms of actually comparing which program to go with, I'm not aware, I don't know if anybody here is, but you know, how do you compare the, the um, uh, supplementary policies, the Blue Cross versus the, versus the United Healthcare policy? I, I don't know anything that's going to do that, but I think they'll explain that. Anybody, anybody have any suggestions for navigating Medicare? Yes, sir. Hold on, we'll bring you the mic. October and November. October, November of this year, you'll be getting a magazine from Medicare, and it will show all of the different plans that are available, the cost, what they provide, and you can look at it and make a decision from that, but it'll take you hours and hours to go through it. Thank you. And did, did you have a suggestion? The gentleman at the back has a suggestion? Thank you. Thanks for waiting for the mic. Uh, Medicare's own site uh, has a plan finder. That there you go. Good job at uh, identifying plan D. And they tell you what the annual cost would be. You enter all your drugs. And uh, they tell you the various um, uh, uh, insurers uh, from whom you can buy. Um, mm -hmm. The Medigap policy, um, I don't have to go into that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I was 
very pleasant, these are gentlemen at the front here, I was very pleasantly surprised by what the government offered in terms of information. Yes, sir. Also, if you're retired military for at least 20 years, you'd be a creditor for life. That's right. It takes, you don't have to worry about supplemental. It's just terrific. Right. I go into UCLA, Medicare takes care of 80%. Right. 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 And and just on that score, uh, I mean, it's amazing if you spend a little time what you can find out about Agent Orange benefits if you're if you're ex-military. Um, I mean, there's a, I've got a list. I've got a bookmark list of ships. People say to me, "Well, we 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 never had feet on the ground." So does doesn't doesn't it doesn't matter if you. If you were on a ship, I have a very dear friend we lost two years ago who was on a ship in the Mekong Delta, never had feet on the ground. His ship was on the list. We were talking about it one day, coming back from a meditation center. By the time he got, I was living in Northern California. By the time he got back to Emeryville, I'd looked at the list, called him and said, Jerry, your ship's on the list. Sure enough, you finished up getting $40,000 a year from them in benefits. $40,000 a year, $45,000 in back pay and $40,000 a year in benefits. So I just want to say to you, again, perfect use of the internet. Any, uh, anyone else that would like to uh, ask a question about? Yes, can you put the website where we can get this presentation? You had a right during the start of the program. I sure can. I'd be happy to do that. Um, so you're going to find it on our website which is here, wait a minute, oh here, there we go, whoops, I'm, oh, I'm not, I'm in the, uh, the problem is I'm, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm out of, uh, I'm out of show mode, yeah, 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 but no, I, I'll bring it up for you, hold, hold on a minute, uh, view, view, slideshow, there you go, right here. So it's right at the top of the page up here. And I'll put it back up there for you. But if you go down here, getting the most out of the internet, you click on here, that's where the slides are. And, and the audio, this audio will follow again. And if you want to see the site in big letters, uh, it is right there. Whoops, sorry there right here okay yes uh, can we can we give the gentleman the mic thanks Peter Thank you, Train. Thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you finally. You know, one of the beauties about doing this virtual work, and it's amazing, is that I, we get to, look, to, to talk to people and meet people virtually and, and have a relationship with them over years and years, but we never see them physically. And there are people, when I come to this conference, who I feel uh, are good friends, but I've never been able to give them a hug before. And so, you know, it's, uh, it, 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 it's a real benefit. Question. Uh, go go ahead, and then the gentleman at the front. How are we doing on time? Yes. On the internet, many sites will offer, or a few will offer telephone navigation, and I wanted to see if anybody has used that, like zero. I know that you have the navigation uh, program for patients. I just not heard any. And PCRI has a has a has yeah. a and PCRI. I've never used it. I don't know if anybody has, but yes, Peter. Yes. Early diagnosis, I learned the right to phone to just talk to another human being. No, it's, it's, it's gone through this. It's vital. You know, just to reassure you that uh, you're going to live. It's, it's important. 
Okay, and this will be the last question. The gentleman at the front will make this the last question. In support of the statement, you, you mentioned the support sites that are interactive, and I'm on, I think, three or four of them, and I'm new to this gig. And you got to have a little thick skin, because there's some guys out there that will pounce on you if you don't agree with them or say anything wrong. That's right. So I just warn you, if you're thin-skinned, be, be careful. Well, I, I tried to make that point as nicely as I could by saying to you, you just got to watch out for who's responding to you and get a feel and what you say. So, um, yeah, and thank you for making that point. I, I, I wholeheartedly endorse it. Okay, well, it's 2.30, um, and so we'll finish on time. If anybody has any other questions, I'm, I'm happy to, uh, to field them later. Thanks very much for your attention. Bye-bye. <laughs>